Oh. Uh-huh. 
Advaita Saptami, the <clears throat> auspicious day of appearance of Sri Advaita Acharya. And we will read <clears throat> few verses from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, <clears throat> glorifying Advaita Acharya. <clears throat> and uh, then speak. little bit about his glories because to describe his glories is not possible completely. <clears throat> so we will read <clears throat> first two verses from Swarup Damadar uh, Goswami Kadacha where he describes the tattva of uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Nityananda Prabhu and Advaita Acharya. So, <clears throat> two verses describing this tattva. And these are the fourth and the fifth verses from the sixth chapter of Adilila, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Jaya Jaya Si Chaitanya Jaya Nitananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda <clears throat> so, verse number four. Mahavishnur Jagatkarta. Mahavishnur Jagatkarta. Mayaya Yaksri Jatyadaha. Mayaya Yaksri Jatyadaha. Tasyavatara Evayam. Tasyavatara evayam Advaita Charya Ishwaraha Advaita Charya Ishwaraha So translation of this verse <clears throat> Lord Advaita Acharya is the incarnation of Mahavishnu whose main function is to create the cosmic world through the action of Maya. And then the next verse. Advaitam harina advaitat. Advaitam harina advaitat. Acharyam bhakti samsanat. Acharyam bhakti samsanat. Bhaktavataram isham tam. Bhaktavataram isham tam. Advaita charya masraye. Advaita charya masraye. Translation. <clears throat> because he is non different from Hari, the Supreme Lord, he is called Advaita. And because he propagates the cult of devotion, he is called Acharya. He is the Lord and the incarnation of Lord's devotee. Therefore, I take shelter of him. And then I read two more verses from the same chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita, 12 and 28, which very beautifully explain these verses from uh, 
स्वरूप दमादार कदाच जगत मंगल अद्वैत जगत गुण धाम मंगल चरित्र साधा मंगल यान्र नाम श्री अद्वैत आचार्य इज ऑल स्पीशस टू द वर्ल्ड He is the reservoir of all auspicious attributes. His characteristics, activities, and name are always auspicious. <clears throat> uh, purport by His Divine Grace, Sri Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Sri Advaita Prabhu, who is an incarnation of Mahavishnu, is an acharya or teacher. All his activities and all other activities of Vishnu are auspicious. Anyone who can view the all auspiciousness in the pastimes of Lord Vishnu also becomes auspicious simultaneously. Therefore, since Lord Vishnu is the fountainhead of auspiciousness, anyone who is attracted by the devotional service of Lord Vishnu can render the greatest service to human society rejected persons in the material world who refuse to understand pure devotional service as eternal function of the living entities as and as actual liberation of the living being from conditioned life uh, become bereft of full devotional service because of their poor fund of knowledge In the teachings of Advaita Prabhu there is no question of fruitive activities or impersonal liberation bewildered by the spell of material energy however persons who could not understand that Advaita Prabhu is non different from Vishnu wanted to follow him uh, in their impersonal conceptions the attempt of Advaita Prabhu to punish them is also auspicious Lord Vishnu Uh, and his activities can bestow all good fortune directly and indirectly in other words being favored by lord vishnu and being punished by lord vishnu uh, are one and the same because all activities of vishnu are absolute according to some mangala is another name of advaita prabhu <clears throat> as an uh, as the uh, as the causal 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 incarnation of lord vishnu's uh, or lord vishnu's incarnation for particular occasion uh, he is the supply agent uh, or ingredient in material nature however he is uh, never to be considered material all his activities are spiritual anyone who hears about uh, and glorifies his Uh, and glorifies him becomes glorified himself for such activities free uh, one from all kinds of misfortune one should not invest any material contamination or impersonalism in the vishnu form everyone should try to understand the real identity of lord vishnu by such knowledge one can attain the highest stage of perfection and one more verse and purport by shila prabhupad <clears throat> text number 28 jivani starila krishna bhakti koridan uh, gita uh, bhagavate koila bhaktira vyakyan he delivered all living beings by offering the gift of krishna bhakti he explained bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam in the light of devotional service purport <clears throat> all the sri advaita prabhu is an incarnation of vishnu for the welfare of conditioned souls he manifested himself as a servitor of the supreme personality of godhead and throughout all his activities he showed himself to be an eternal servitor lord chaitanya and lord nityananda also manifested the same principle although they belong to the category of vishnu If Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda and Advaita Prabhu had exhibited their all powerful Vishnu potencies with this within this material world people would have become greater impersonalists, monists and self-worshippers than they had already become under the spell of this age. 
Therefore, the personality of Godhead and his different incarnations and forms played the parts of devotees to instruct the conditioned souls how to approach the transcendental stage of devotional service. Advaita Acharya especially intended to teach the conditioned souls about devotional service. The word Acharya means teacher. The special function of such teacher is to make people Krishna conscious. A bona fide teacher following the footsteps of Advaita Acharya has no other business than to spread the principles of Krishna consciousness all over the world. The real <coughs> qualification of an Acharya is that he presents himself as a servant of the Supreme. Uh, of the Supreme. Such a bona fide Acharya can never support the demoniac activities of atheistic men who present themselves as God. It is the main business of an Acharya to defy such impostors posing as God <coughs> before the innocent public. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Buddhale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swani Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschetya Deshatarine Vanchaka Upataru Vesha Kripa Sindhu Vevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Ajahnu Lambita Bujauk Nakavadatu Sankirtanai Kapitaro Kamalaya Taksha Vishwambaro Dvijavaro Yuga Dharma Palu Vande Jagat Priya Karo Karunamata Yandak Pranishya Mamavachi Mamam Prasuptam Sanjeevaya Takila Shakti Darak Svadhamna Anyam Shahasta Charana Shravana Atva Agadim Prananna Mau Bhagavate Purushaya Tukya Hare Krishna. <clears throat> so today we are fortunate enough to uh, try to glorify Advaita Acharya Prabhu. And as Prabhupada said uh, in the first purport which we read, whoever glorifies Advaita Acharya Prabhu, especially on this day, he becomes glorious himself because he uh, purifies his heart from all contamination. That's the purpose of our glorification. <laughs> Naturally, people, they are inclined to uh, blaspheme others. There is very strong fault-finding tendency in every one of us. Because we are self-centered by nature. We always want to put ourselves in the center and therefore we need to uh, blaspheme others, we need to uh, do some ninda towards others and say that, you know, I'm better than them. <laughs> but when we start glorifying somebody, uh, this is the contamination. This is something which uh, actually, this is the dirt in our heart. This tendency is the main dirt in our heart. How to get rid of this tendency? There is only one way to get rid of this tendency. How to get rid of this dirt or of this contamination within our heart? There is only one way to do it, is to glorify. It means that we put ourselves somewhere else and we put somebody whom we glorify in the center. And especially if we glorify Lord Chaitanya and his uh, associates, uh, then it's a very uh, purifying process. If we do it sincerely, with the desire to glorify them and to purify us from all these material tendencies, which are very, very strong. So we have these occasions when we can uh, fully, without any uh, limitations, to glorify the associates of Lord Chaitanya, and we should take full advantage of these occasions. Whenever we have this opportunity to glorify, we should try to do it, uh, uh, trying to understand how insignificant we actually are 
and how great they are, what they are doing, and uh, what are we in comparison with them, uh, and how they are coming here uh, to this world to deliver the conditioned souls. Srila Prabhupada very beautifully and very aptly describes in the second purport why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, all his associates uh, came and played the role, even uh, those associates who are in the category of Vishnu Tattva, Advaita Acharya Nityananda Prabhu and Lord Chaitanya himself, uh, they belong to Vishnu Tattva category. They are uh, in the category of God. But uh, they never wanted to, glorif to be glorified as God and uh, they never, uh, they didn't display so freely their powers of Godhood. They, uh, they had a pleasure to play a role of, uh, of a servant of God. Even though they are Ishwaras, as it is said in the verses which we read, uh, two times Swarup Damodar Goswami says, Advaita Acharya is Ishwara, he is God. He is God himself. Still, nevertheless, he plays the role of a servant of God uh, because, as Prabhupada says, in Kali Yuga, if somebody has little mystic power, little mystic power, not much mystic power, some little ashes he can create. <laughs> not the whole universe, but little ashes. <laughs> so, people, uh, you know, foolish people of Kali Yuga starts glorifying him as God. You know, what kind of God he is, you know. He produces some ashes. <laughs> what, what is the use? Oh, of course, this is very holy ashes. <laughs> but, but uh, or, you know, give some watches, or Swiss watches. That's very, <laughs> that's a very powerful manifestation of godliness. <laughs> but that's, that's a problem in Kali Yuga because people, <clears throat> they already have this tendency, I'm God. And if somebody uh, manifests uh, little power, they glorify him as God uh, with the desire to become God himself, themselves. You know, all this cheap glorification of somebody as God in Kali Yuga ultimately has the underlying tendency, the background, uh, why people are so easily prey to this. Because they, they want to be God themselves. They don't want to glorify somebody as God without the prospect to become God themselves. <laughs> You know, if somebody uh, in, in a very easygoing way uh, says, I am God, and they say, oh yeah, this is good. This is good. I am also God. <laughs> and especially if he preaches this thing. Therefore, God himself comes to Kali Yuga, but he comes as Chana Avatar. Chana Avatar means he doesn't display, never display. He doesn't want to display. He doesn't want to teach that he is God. He wants to teach our real function. In the previous ages, God could freely come as God. There was no this danger that his incarnation would be misinterpreted. <laughs> you know, because people had more stronger tendency for service in the previous ages. They would understand, yeah, this is the real God. This is the Lord. And I am his servant. Here in Kali Yuga, if somebody comes and says, I'm God, you know, everyone says, yes, very good, I'm also God. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> so that's why Lord Chaitanya comes and he brings with him Advaita Acharya and Nityananda Prabhu uh, for this very purpose. You know, they are they God, but they show by their behavior that position of a servant is even higher than position of God. Position of the real servant of God is more glorified in the eyes of God himself than his own position. <laughs> and therefore, Lord Chaitanya glorifies Lord Nityananda and, uh, uh, and Advaita Acharya. And they are in this competition who is serving better. So, 
we have to really understand, first of all, uh, the tattva, while glorifying uh, anyone uh, who is a part of the entourage of Lord Chaitanya, we first of all have to very clearly understand the tattva, and then to understand how this tattva manifests while they're playing the role uh, of a devotee. Because that's also very interesting and very important for us to understand how this tattva, their nature, their real nature manifest in their pastimes uh, when they're displaying this devotional service and what they teach by their lilas, by their behavior. The lessons which Advaita Acharya is giving to us are very, very grave and very important. And uh, we will be greatly benefited if we uh, at least touch a little bit of the lessons which Advaita Acharya uh, came to teach us. So, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya, uh, in, uh, in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Srila Prabhupada writes that uh, Lord Chaitanya is never alone. <clears throat> we never see, uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada even writes, that we never see the picture of Lord Chaitanya alone. There is one picture of Lord Chaitanya. He is dancing and he is very prominent. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you first look at this picture, you, uh, uh, you have an impression as if he is alone. But, you know, if you see the, uh, uh, in some distance, there is very small devotees there. <laughs> so even in this picture, he is always surrounded by his devotees. <clears throat> he came uh, <clears throat> for this purpose to uh, show that he doesn't like to be glorified alone also. When we want to glorify Lord Chaitanya, we have to really understand his inner desire. He is more uh, pleased when we glorify his associates. He came with, uh, you know, with his Anga and uh, Upanga and uh, with his Astra and with his Parshats. This is the glorification of the incarnation of uh, the uh, Kali Yuga. Yagyai Sankirtana Praya Yajanti Hi Sumethasa Krishna Varnam Tvisha Krishnam Sangapangastra Parshadam. This uh, glorious verse from uh, the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam uh, explains the nature of the incarnation of this age. Lord Chaitanya. Uh, is not coming alone. He is coming with all his associates because, again, this is the nature of Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, it is said that Kalo uh, uh, Sangha Shakta. Uh, Shakti in Kali Yuga is in, in, the, uh, in the assemblies of devotees. In the assemblies, not necessarily devotees. In Kali Yuga, uh, you know, one person cannot do anything. And even the Lord himself comes and he says, even I cannot do anything alone in this Kali Yuga. <laughs> I need to bring so many Anga, Upanga and Parshat uh, together with me. Only all together we will be able to accomplish this mission. And therefore Srila Prabhupada, he again and again stresses the society of devotees. He said in one purport in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that if one thinks that he can become Krishna conscious alone, he is delirious. He's just a madman. <laughs> if he thinks that he can become Krishna conscious without the society of devotees, it's ridiculous. It's not possible. We need the society to be supported by this society, to be nourished by this society, uh, to be, you know, encouraged by the society of devotees. That's why ISKCON is created. And even the Lord himself, he came and he, he is the original founder of ISKCON of International Society for Krishna Consciousness <laughs> because this is the purpose of his incarnation. He came and he came together with all his uh, devotees. And Advaita Acharya is one of his principal uh, uh, associates whom we are, we are glorifying today. And as it is explained in the verses which we read by Swarup Damodar Goswami, Advaita Acharya is Vishnu Tattva, he is Ishvara himself, 
And um, uh, he is a very particular incarnation of uh, Lord Mahavishnu uh, in his capacity of presiding deity of Maya. <coughs> uh, as we know, uh, the Lord uh, in any of his incarnations has his uh, uh, energy together with him. There is a male principle and female principle. Male principle is the Lord himself and female principle is his energy. So Advaita Acharya is a very particular incarnation of the Lord Mahavishnu in his capacity of uh, uh, Upadana Karana. While anal analyzing the material creation, this creation, uh, our Acharyas, they say that there are two uh, causes, two causes for this material creation. One is Nimita Karana, uh, which is remote cause or instrumental cause. And another one is uh, Upadana Karana, which is material cause. To create this world, you need uh, Nimita Karana or instrumental cause. You need somebody who desires to create, who knows how to create, who knows the design of this creation, uh, and who, yeah, who wants to create this. Uh, all this are uh, Nimita Karana. And, uh, but you need also the material from which you create this universe. So the Lord himself is both Nimita Karana and Upadana Karana of this world. That's a very important uh, part of our philosophy, to understand that the Lord himself not only Nimita Karana, but also Upadana Karana. Like in the philosophy of Madhvacharya, uh, whom we follow, of course, but we have some different understandings sometimes uh, on uh, different points. And um, uh, uh, Madhvacharya, he agrees that the Lord is Nimita Karana, but he doesn't agree that the Lord is Upadana Karana. He says, matter, matter is Upadana Karana. But ultimately we say, what is matter? Matter is the manifestation, is the energy of the Lord. The Lord himself is Upadana Karana. So, when uh, the Lord himself becomes, what is Nimita Karana? Nimita Karana, the energy of Nimita Karana, the Lord Mahavishnu, when he creates this world, the energy of Nimita Karana is Jiva Maya, the living entities. That's the energy of Mahavishnu creating this world, the living entities, uh, Jiva Maya. And uh, uh, when the Lord himself becomes Upadana Karana of this world, uh, then his energy is this Maya or the matter. <laughs> so Advaita Acharya is the manifestation of this uh, Upadana Karana uh, Lord who is, the, uh, who is the presiding deity of Maya, of the material energy of the Lord. And therefore, sometimes it is said that he is Sadashiva himself. Actually, there is no difference between Mahavishnu and Sadashiva because Sadashiva uh, is uh, Vishnu Tattva. Sadashiva becomes Shambhu uh, and he directly associates with Maya. And uh, through the union of Shambhu and uh, uh, Maya, this material world is created. But before that, uh, Sadashiva, who is Vishnu Tattva himself, uh, he, is, uh, he is not directly in contact with Maya. He is, uh, he is transcendental and uh, his expansion as Shambhu uh, contacts directly with Maya. But ultimately Advaita Acharya is this transcendental incarnation of the Lord who is uh, uh, the presiding deity of uh, this material energy of this Maya. And uh, therefore it is said that sometimes he is called uh, as Shiva himself or Rudra even uh, when he would manifest his uh, uh, angry form uh, or when he was roaring uh, to uh, call 
uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sometimes uh, he was called Rudra because Rudra uh, is somebody who is calling very loudly. <laughs> he was doing this humkars, and this is also uh, nature of Rudra to do this hum, <laughs> this very uh, loud roars. Uh, anyway, that's the tattva. We should understand this is the tattva, and then we should understand how this tattva manifests through his lila. And uh, because when uh, the Lord Himself, especially when He comes to uh, Kali Yuga, to the people of Kali Yuga, He hides His identity very strongly. But uh, every now and then, His identity surfaces from, uh, and uh, He shows His identity in His lila. So, see, Advaita Acharya, he was born in, West, uh, in East Bengal, in Bangladesh. Nowadays, Bangladesh, near Silhet. And his father was uh, Kuvera Pandit, and his father, mother uh, was Nabi Devi. And his father was a very great Pandit, and he was the court Pandit of the king, Divya Singha. And uh, Advaita Acharya was born 53 years before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left this world, Advaita Acharya uh, had a ripe age of 101 year. <laughs> and despite of this age, uh, every uh, time when devotees would come from Navadvip to Jagannath Puri, he would walk all this distance in, in his age of 100 years. <laughs> he lived in this world for 125 years. So he lived uh, 25 years after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya. So for a long time uh, he was living in this world. But when he was just a small boy, when he was born to Kuvera Pandit, Kuvera Pandit was very happy when the small boy uh, was born and all the neighbors who saw little boy, they said, uh, what, ki what kind of pious activities this person uh, committed in his previous life that such a boy would be born to him. So he was a very unusual boy and when he was uh, a boy of five years old, uh, uh, Kuvera Pandit, who was the priest and uh, the spiritual master of Maharaja Devi Sinha, uh, took uh, this little boy to, uh, to, to the court of the king. And the king was in the temple at that time, and the king was worshipper of Shakti, of Durga. And he had this deity of Durga, and Kuvera Pandit came to this temple with his son and he bowed down to uh, Durga and uh, uh, Maharaja Devi Singh, of course, was the worshipper of Durga. And the only one who didn't bow down to Durga was little Kamalaksha. When the Advaita Acharya was born, his name was Kamalaksha. So, uh, or Panchanana, Kama uh, Panchanana. So this, uh, when the king saw that the boy didn't uh, bow down to his worshipable deity, the king became very angry. And he said, what kind of son you have? The son is very badly trained. You know, you should train your son that he should worship to, do, to my deity, to Durga. And uh, then Kuvera Pandit very innocently approached his son and said, like, you know, we know sometimes parents of devotees say, Dandavat, 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 you know, and push, push the children, you do Dandavat, you do Dandavat, and children don't want to do it. So in the same way, uh, Kuvera Pandit, he approached his little son and said, Dandavat, Dandavat, Dandavat. And uh, all of a sudden, this little son started speaking very, in a very learned language. He said, I can do Dandavat. There is no problem for me to do Dandavat. But it will be very inauspicious if I do it. Uh, so it will be very a mongol. It is said here that Advaita Acharya is mongol. So he is about to display very uh, auspicious lila uh, doing this. And uh, Kuvera Pandit uh, was struck with wonder. How is it the son is speaking this? And 
the king became even more surprised. He said, why it is so a Mongol uh, if you bow down to the deity? Uh, it's very auspicious if you bow down to the deity, you're supposed to do it. And little uh, Kamalaksa, he said, uh, I made a warning. You do whatever you like with this warning, but I told you that it will be that something very inauspicious will happen if I bow down to this deity. But if you want me to bow down to this deity, I will bow down to this deity. And very humbly, he made the dandava to this deity. And at that moment, the deity of Durga burst. And uh, the goddess Durga left this deity in disgust. <laughs> that uh, her master, uh, Shiva, Sada Shiva, is bowing down to her. She couldn't tolerate this. Therefore, she laid, left the deity, and everyone was watching into this, you know, burst, broken deity. And little Kamalakshi, he got up and said, I told you that something inauspicious will happen. You didn't listen to me, so this is what happened. <laughs> And at that moment, uh, all the people, they thought, oh, this boy, he's very special. Maybe he's God himself. But uh, then he became, again, a little boy, and very innocently he displayed his uh, uh, childish pastimes. So when he was just a few years uh, after that, a couple of years after that, his father moved uh, to seal head, and when he was 12 years old, his father and his mother moved to Navadvip because at that time, or to Shantipur, because at that time Navadvip and Shantipur were very famous. They were university cities. And um, uh, after some time, after moving uh, to uh, this, th there are some pastimes in the meantime, but we don't have much time to describe them. Uh, when they moved to uh, uh, Shantipur, after some time, uh, they passed away. Both uh, mother and father of uh, Advaita Acharya passed away. And uh, Advaita Acharya, he was young uh, youth at that time. He was 25 years old when that happened. He took this opportunity. He didn't want to get married at that time. Actually, he, he married in a very ripe age. He was more than 60 years old when he married. <laughs> Before that, he, he was too busy. <laughs> His first son was born when he was 70 years old, <laughs> Achyutananda. Uh, so when he was 25 years old, he was already very learned and he was already awarded the title of Acharya, and it would be right time for him to start his career as a professor, as would be natural for any Brahman at that time. He was from very uh, educated and very uh, noble Brahmana lineage, but he didn't start his uh, profession as a teacher at that time. At that time, what he did, he went on pilgrimage on the pretext of doing uh, Shraddha ceremony for his father and his mother. He went to Gaya and he spent some time in Gaya and then he said, uh, since I already went uh, such a long way, uh, I should do the pilgrimage all over the holy places in India. And he <coughs> made his tour uh, and he visited all the holy places. He went uh, south uh, to Rameshwaram. He went uh, west to Dwaraka, he went uh, north to Badarikashram. Uh, so he uh, basically went through all the holy places in, uh, in India. And uh, <coughs> while coming, the, yeah, and then, uh, uh, then he went to Vrindavan. Ultimately, that was his last destination. After going through all the holy places, he went to Vrindavan. And when he came to Vrindavan, his real uh, mission started uh, uh, becoming more and more clear. He was rolling in the dust of Vrindavan and he was uh, crying and saying, Oh Krishna, oh Lord of my life, please manifest yourself. 
And once <coughs> he was in uh, Nandagram, and he was uh, crying and crying and crying and saying, Oh, my Lord, <coughs> so many years passed while you were here, and I don't see you. <coughs> please, please, uh, manifest yourself in front of me. I want to see you. I want to see your form. I want to worship your form. <coughs> and uh, at that night, uh, while Advaita Acharya was asleep, Lord Krishna came to his uh, dream. And he said, uh, <coughs> I'm laying down in the ground <coughs> near Dvadashadya Tila, uh, Tila <coughs> in Vrindavan. And uh, this is the deity uh, <coughs> to whom uh, Kubja was worshipping. <laughs> when we know when Krishna went to uh, Mathura, he had some little affair with, uh, with a hunchback uh, woman in, uh, in Mathura. And gopis will become really upset with him. <laughs> they said, he left us, and he is doing this mischief with this hunchback woman. What, what's wrong with him? <laughs> you know, he left us, the most beautiful and young woman in the creation, and he is engaged with this strange <laughs> lady who doesn't even love him so properly. So when uh, Krishna actually purified her and rectified her from all her impurities, for the rest of her life, Kubja was worshipping this deity of Krishna as a cowherd boy playing his flute. So uh, uh, answering the call, and actually uh, it is said that uh, there are different explanations of our charis, who is this Kubja? And one of the explanations is that Kubja is the Earth, uh, is the planet Earth. So, therefore, uh, Advaita Acharya being the uh, presiding deity of uh, this uh, uh, material energy, uh, it's, it's only appropriate that he would be worshipping the deity to whom uh, Kubja was worshipping. So, Lord himself came in a dream to Advaita Acharya and said, if you go to this place, you will find uh, me there laying in the ground. Please excavate me from the ground and uh, uh, install me in the temple in Vrindavan. So, Advaita Acharya came with uh, all the villagers. He came to this uh, Vadashaditya Tila uh, near uh, the place where uh, Madan Mohan uh, Mandir is there, the still the uh, banyan tree is there under which uh, this deity was found by Advaita Acharya. And uh, uh, Advaita Acharya started excavating and very soon they saw this beautiful deity of Madan Mohan as we know him today. But at that time uh, there was no name for this deity. Krishna didn't reveal his name uh, initially. He said, this is the deity to whom Kubja was worshipping, so install me in the temple. Advaita Acharya uh, took the deity from the earth, made the proper Abhishek, and everyone very joyfully uh, performed this pastime. And he appointed some brahmanas to uh, worship this deity. But when this uh, happened, there were some envious people. Uh, who uh, wanted to uh, make some apparat to the deity. Some, probably some people uh, infected by Muslim mentality who didn't like the uh, deity worship and uh, everything. So they, uh, they uh, made a plot among themselves. They decided that they will do, uh, they will come to the temple at one uh, point together uh, when uh, nobody is there and they will attack the deity and uh, they will uh, try to demolish this deity. So, of course, this is the pastime which is arranged by the Lord Himself. Through this pastime, the Lord Himself wanted to reveal His real name to Advaita Acharya. So what happened at that time when uh, these um, people, uh, they came to the temple and nobody was there. 
the priest of the uh, of the puja he left the temple and nobody was there uh, so these people uh, with weapons in their hands came to the temple and they wanted to destroy the deity and uh, lord krishna himself uh, uh, he pretended that he is afraid of these people and he hid himself under the uh, under the um, flowers there was a lot of flowers so uh, he hid himself there and they came to the temple and they wanted to destroy the deity but they didn't see anyone on the altar nobody was there and they were searching and searching and searching and Krishna was uh, trembling in the uh, in the <laughs> uh, in the flowers and ultimately they left and after that a uh, few minutes after that the Brahmana priest who was uh, taking care of this deity appointed by uh, Advaita Acharya he came to the temple and he didn't see the deity either he couldn't find him uh, and he started lamenting and he said probably I did some apparat to him that's why he left I'm such a bad Brahmana, I didn't worship him properly. He, he was crying there and he was rolling in the, in, in the floor of the temple. Where is the deity? Where did he left? Uh, where did he leave? And then he came to Advaita Acharya and said, uh, Prabhu, <laughs> look what happened. I did some apparat, you, you, you should make some punishment to me. The Lord left the temple, he's not in the altar anymore. So Advaita Acharya, he became uh, very morose and he came to the temple and he started crying. And he said to this priest, the Lord came on his own accord. And then he left. What can you do? He is, uh, he is independent Lord. He, he came on his own and now he left and, you know, God knows where he is and he started lamenting and saying, you know, uh, oh my dear Lord, why, why did you do this to me? For a long time I was praying for you to manifest, you manifested yourself and now you disappeared again. What happened with you? And, uh, uh, and this night uh, the Lord himself uh, again came to Advaita Acharya and he said, don't worry, I am here. But I wanted to reveal to you my name, my real name. Uh, please, now reinstall me on this altar. I am there hiding in the flowers, uh, uh, there in the temple, uh, or nearby in the garden. I am hiding there. Reinstall me, and from now on, call me Madan Gopal. Because all the people who will see me will become crazy. This is my real name. I'm Gopal who makes everyone crazy. <laughs> so my name is Madan Gopal. Uh, you know, install me and call me this name and I will be very happily uh, accepting the worship uh, from you and from these Pujaris. And uh, whoever will come and see me uh, will go crazy. So that's the, uh, again, uh, the Lord himself is revealing uh, the purpose of the incarnation of uh, uh, Advaita Acharya. Why it is Advaita Acharya who uh, revealed or who uh, gave this deity uh, to the whole world? Because Advaita Acharya wanted to make everyone crazy uh, with the love of God. <laughs> he wanted to propagate this uh, emotional, completely overwhelming love of Godhead to everyone and therefore uh, Lord himself came to Advaita Acharya in this form of Madan Gopal and said this is what you want, this is what I will do on your behalf whoever comes to me, whoever sees me uh, will become crazy and you will become happy by seeing them becoming crazy so <laughs> that's, the, that's the craziness parampara which which we belong to, which we <laughs> proudly belong to. <laughs> so, we ultimately want to become crazy. You know, when, when uh, Srila Prabhupada started his movement, you know, all these deprogrammers, they started saying that whoever joins this movement, he becomes crazy, and Prabhupada says, yes, 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 that's, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> this is the purpose, this is what we want to do. <laughs> 
but ultimately won't. But it takes some time before you really become crazy. <laughs> you know, in the beginning you become a little crazy. <laughs> you start putting tilak and wearing the strange clothes and going to the street. It's it's not the full extent of craziness expected from you. Actually, Rod Chaitanya expects much more craziness from you. <laughs> So if your parents will tell you, you know, you become crazy, you said, no, it's, it's only beginning. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry too much now. <laughs> it's only beginning. <laughs> so anyways, so this is how uh, Madan Gopal appeared there. And uh, when uh, Advaita Acharya saw this, he, he became very happy, saw this dream, and uh, he came to the temple and he found uh, Madan Gopal, he put him back to the altar and he started dancing and dancing and dancing. For two hours he was dancing without stop and chanting in complete craziness. And then after that, after this, when he was completely, totally exhausted, he found the priest. And he said, go do puja. Why are you not doing puja? You're supposed to do puja. Puja should be very punctual in time. Why are you not in the temple? And the priest said, why are you joking with me? My Lord is not there. He left. He doesn't want my puja. He said, no, no. He is there. He is back there. He left and then he came back. Don't worry. <laughs> so then the priest came and he saw again uh, Madan Gopal. And he said, uh, from now on you worship this Lord and his name will be Madan Gopal from uh, this. And don't ask me why. You will understand it yourself later. <laughs> so this is how Madan Gopal made his appearance. And uh, when Shimati Ratharani was installed uh, near him, next to him, uh, by the desire of Maharaja Purushottama Jana, uh, son of uh, Maharaja Prataparudra, uh, then he became known as Madan uh, Mohan. Before that, he was known, when he was alone, he was known as Madan Gopal. So that's the deity, the <clears throat> first deity of Vrindavan, uh, which was found by, by Advaita Acharya. For, for so long time, Advaita Acharya was living, uh, f uh, till what time I should finish class? No, no limit. We can go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> according to the to our tradition <laughs> anyway i will try to contain myself <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, when uh, uh, for a long time advaita acharya spent in uh, vrindavan and then he uh, had this desire uh, to uh, go back uh, to shantipur to navadvip because uh, in his meditation, it has become clear that the Lord will appear in Navadvip. And the real mission of Advaita Acharya is there in Bengal, in West Bengal. And therefore, he decided to go uh, to Navadvip and he wanted to take Madan Kopal with him. He became so attached to this deity uh, and uh, he was ready to take him. And Madan Kopal came uh, in his dream and he said, no, no. No, no, don't take me away from Vrindavan. I don't want to be away from Vrindavan. I only want to stay here. Uh, and Advaita Acharya started arguing with him. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to uh, leave you here? And how will I live without you? And he said, no, no. You go to uh, Nidivan and you search in Nidivan. And in Nidivan, if you search properly, you will find a very special picture of myself. This picture was painted by Vishakha herself on the request of Shimati Radharani. When Shimati Radharani was experiencing separation uh, with the Lord, Vishakha, to uh, pacify Shimati Radharani, made the picture of Krishna. And this picture is not different from me. So you find this picture, is, uh, this picture in Nidivan. Take this picture with you uh, to Bengal and worship this picture. This picture is still there in Shantipur, in the house of Advaita Acharya. 
So Advaita Acharya went to Nidivan and he found this picture uh, which was painted by uh, Vishakha Devi. And he took his picture and he, uh, crying, he left Madan Gopal. Yeah, actually Madan Gopal said that I want to be... Uh, initially I was worshipped in Mathura, so I still want to uh, be worshipped in Mathura. And there is one uh, Brahman, uh, his name is Chobi. He will come. And when he will come uh, to you, you please uh, give me to him uh, and, uh, uh, and then you can go uh, back to Bengal and uh, continue your devotional service to me. So the next day, uh, this Chobe came to Advaita Acharya and he was very embarrassed. This Brahman from Mathura, Chobe, uh, it means Chaturvedi. It's a corrupted name of Chaturvedi. Very learned Brahman came uh, to Madhura and he said, uh, from Madhura to, to Vrindavan, uh, to the temple of Madan Gopal. And he found Advaita Acharya and he said, I'm really embarrassed, but I have to tell you that uh, Madan Gopal came to me in a dream. And he said that I should take him from you uh, to Madhura. And Advaita Acharya, he smiled, he said, he also came to me in a dream. And he said to me the same, so don't be embarrassed. <laughs> you know. Please imagine somebody comes here and said, Lord Jagannath came to me in a dream, please give me Lord Jagannath, I go home. <laughs> so, <laughs> probably it would not be so easy to do it, but <laughs> Advaita Acharya, he easily did it because he, he came to him in a dream. So he gave uh, Madan Gopal to this uh, Brahman Chobi and Brahman Chobi, he adopted this Madan Gopal as his son. He had another son uh, and he was worshipping him as his son, especially, uh, actually Madan Gopal wanted to enjoy the motherly love, but Salya Rasa of, of the wife of this Brahman. So that's the story of Madan Gopal, the deity of Advaita Acharya. And Advaita Acharya went uh, back to Mayapur to uh, Shantipur and to uh, Navadvip. And uh, he was, uh, he settled there, he became a professor. And because he was so learned, he had many, many disciples. And because he had many, many disciples, he became very rich. Uh, <coughs> it's, a, it's an old tradition, if you have many disciples, you become very rich. <laughs> So he established two houses, one house in, uh, in uh, two schools. Uh, he was teaching in both schools. He became very famous professor with many, many followers. Uh, and in Shantipur and in, uh, in uh, Navadvip, he had two houses and he uh, got married uh, very late in his life for many, many years in the past before he got married. Uh, and. Uh, he married with two wives, uh, and uh, 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 he was looking at the society, uh, and so many people were interested in Vyakarana. So many people were interested in logic and Tarka. Uh, so many people were interested in Jyotish. So many people were interested in all these secondary disciplines, but nobody was interested in Bhakti. Very few were interested in bhakti. When he would uh, teach people Vyakarana, uh, students would flock to him. Hundreds and hundreds of students would come to listen to his lecture on Vyakarana. And he became disgusted. Uh, and he started teaching them Bhagavad Gita and nobody came. They came for Bhagavad Gita class and then uh, they saw that uh, it's not it's not relevant. Uh, and he started teaching Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, as it said here, and only few people would come. And uh, of course, he was already rich by that time, so he, he was not in need of too many disciples, but he, he actually gave up uh, teaching Vyakarana. He gave up teaching logic and everything else, and he was only teaching Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, as it is said here in this, uh, in this verse which we read. Uh, because he wanted to teach people bhakti, but nobody was interested in bhakti. 
And we all know, you know, people, if you teach something, if you teach Jyotisha, so many people will come. If you teach Ayurveda, so many people will come. If you teach Bhagavad Gita, oh, you know, Bhagavad Gita, you know, yeah, Bhagavad Gita, very nice, very nice, Bhagavad Gita, very nice. <laughs> but <laughs> what will I do with it? <laughs> It's not, it's not so practical in the minds of people, even though it's the most practical thing, it's the most practical science. If you understand Bhagavad Gita properly, and if you, uh, if you build your life on the foundation of Bhagavad Gita, on teachings of Bhagavad Gita, you become happy. What else do you need? You don't need, you don't need anything else. If you really understand Bhagavad Gita, that's the most practical. But people uh, don't uh, think it's practical and therefore they prefer something more practical, quote unquote. <laughs> therefore they are more into some other uh, secondary uh, branches. And Advaita Acharya was so sad. He was so extremely sad uh, because of this. And he saw how people behave themselves, how they are uh, being very rich, Navadvipa at that time was very rich city because, you know, people would come from all over India to study under the pundits of Navadvipa, uh, to become priests. Uh, and uh, people were doing all kinds of nonsense. They would spend so much time uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, mundane affairs and the marriages of their sons and daughters. Actually, there is one more very important episode of the life of Advaita Acharya, which I forget to tell. After Vrindavan, when he was uh, back, uh, on the way back to Navadvip, Advaita Acharya stayed for some time in Mithila. He was passing by Bihar. And in Mithila, uh, he saw a very old man in Mithila, he was once uh, passing Mithila and uh, he heard a very beautiful song. And this song touched his heart so much. And attracted by the voice of the person who, would, uh, who was singing this song, he came and he saw an old man. And even though he was a very old man, he was singing in a beautiful Gandharva-like voice. And he was sitting on the banyan tree and uh, uh, playing uh, some musical instrument and he was crying at the same time. So Advaita Acharya mesmerized uh, by this song and by the, uh, the vision which he had, uh, he sat down and he listened. For a long time he was listening and this uh, person, he was singing songs, sometimes he was crying himself, sometimes he was laughing. Uh, and then uh, when he stopped singing, Advaita Acharya asked, who are you? What gave you this ability to sing in such a beautiful way? And uh, the verses of the songs are so beautiful, I never heard such songs. Who are you? And uh, 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 he, uh, he became very sad. This person became very sad and he said, you know, I am the court pundit of the local king. And because I am maintained by the king, my heart is polluted. And uh, because my heart is so polluted, sometimes I ran away from the, from the king and I sat down under this tree and I start uh, lamenting about my uh, fate. And I'm uh, doing this and uh, somehow rather spontaneously uh, these songs uh, come from my heart. And sometimes I sing some other songs uh, because Krishna was in my heart, pleased with me, uh, being pleased with me, gives me these uh, moods. And I'm composing this song and my name is Vidyapati. <laughs> so he met with this famous Mithila poet Vidyapati and um, actually the song which Advaita Acharya heard from Vidyapati was a beautiful song which Prabhupada uh, often quoted. This song uh, is describing the plot or the fate of people in this world. And in this song Vidyapati, in a very uh, 
with a lot of feelings, he say uh, that he says that uh, this world is like desert. There is a blazing sun, which is uh, you know shining very brightly, and there is a lot of heat in this desert, and people are suffering in this desert, and sometimes very rarely. Uh, there is one drop of water which uh, comes to this desert. And uh, because it's blazing sun and it is desert, this one drop of water evaporates very quickly. Like in a frying pan, if the frying pan is in, is in the fire and you uh, drop one drop of water, pshik, nothing. So he said, that uh, in this song that the happiness which people experience in this world is like this one drop uh, in the desert. It just for a split second there is an illusion that there is a happiness. And he says, what is this happiness? This is the happiness of associating with one's wife and the happiness of associating with one's children and the happiness of being in the society, Samaj, Sutta, uh, uh, Patni, uh, all this happiness is available here, but it's like one drop. And people are, uh, despite uh, this very meager experience which they have, despite this, uh, they're so mad after this happiness. And they want, they said, oh, yeah, I had this happiness, this, this drop, give me one more drop, and one more drop. And in this way, life after life, life after life, life after life, they usually spend in this pursuit of mundane happiness. So when Advaita Acharya heard this song, he was so touched by this song, he started crying himself. Seeing this scene uh, as Vidyapati was crying, he started crying. And uh, it, this song actually touched uh, the heart of Advaita Acharya so much and he said, you're right, this whole world is suffering. I went through all the India and the only thing which I saw uh, was suffering of people. How they're suffering, uh, being forgetful of the Lord and not really worshipping Him properly from the heart. Not loving, not being attached to the Lord. This is what it is. So when Advaita Acharya came back to Navadvip, this song was reverberating in his ears again and again and again. And again and again and again he was uh, singing this song. And when he saw the, uh, the condition of the people in Navadvip, at one point he became so morose and he said, I cannot do anything. I cannot do anything with these people. I cannot help these people. I am trying. I am preaching Bhagavad Gita. I am preaching Srimad Bhagavatam. But nobody wants to listen. Nobody wants to follow. Everyone wants to uh, chase after this uh, so-called happiness of this world. I cannot do anything. So uh, this Hali Yuga is totally hopeless. Unless the Lord himself comes, nothing will happen. So I will make the Lord come here, or if I don't do this, I will destroy this world, no problem. I will just do my Tandav and Ritya, I will just dance a little bit here and there, no problem. This whole world will be destroyed. What is the use of this world? I created this world. I created this world from my energy. So, and it's useless. I created this world for one purpose, for people to become um, lovers of God, for people to develop attachment to the Supreme Lord, to the holy name of the Lord, and uh, nobody is attached. So what is the use? I will destroy this world and go happily back home, back to Godhead. So that was Advaita Acharya's determination, and uh, that's why uh, while reading a verse from Tantra, he started worshipping uh, Shalagram Srila. Actually, he went to Nepal uh, in his pilgrimage as well, to uh, Kali Gandaki river, and there he found uh, this beautiful Shalagram. So uh, he was worshipping this Shalagram, which he personally brought from Nepal, uh, with Ganga water and Tulsi leaves, offering them and making very loud sound and uh, calling the Lord, please come, please come, please come, please come. <laughs> Unless you come, 
nothing good will happen in this world. So <clears throat> that's how Advaita Acharya started his, uh, his uh, prayers to the Supreme Lord. That's why he started these prayers to the Supreme Lord. And that's why uh, he is glorified as Advaita Acharya. Being the incarnation of the Supreme Lord himself, he is Advaita. But because his most ardent desire within his heart is to teach people bhakti, he is Acharya, as explained in these verses. He is Acharya because he wants people to be happy. And he is teaching himself how people can become happy by uh, glorifying the Supreme Lord, by chanting the Holy Name and by uh, associating with devotees. So that's why he is Acharya. He is non different from the Supreme Lord, but he is teaching how, uh, what, what we are supposed to do. Uh, and therefore he is coming in the mood of the servant uh, of the Supreme Lord and teaching us what it means to be uh, Bhakta. <laughs> and one essential teaching of this is that uh, to be Bhakta means to teach others how to be, become Bhaktas. Bhaktas by nature are preachers. <laughs> bhakti by nature, because we want to share the bhakti or the happiness which we have within our heart. We want to share it. You know, if you say that you have bhakti and you don't preach, you don't have bhakti. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, he was uh, strongly advocating this principle. He said, uh, if, if you have some life, you have to preach. If you have some little bhakti, some drop of realization, you have to preach. Preaching is the natural manifestation of bhakti. And if you don't preach, it means what? It means you don't have bhakti. That's it. <laughs> as much as uh, as much bhakti as you have, uh, the desire to share it with others will be there. And if there is no desire to share it with others, it means that there is no bhakti. <laughs> there is no experience. There is no real connection with the Supreme Lord. You are chanting, but uh, it's kind of useless thing. So uh, that's why Advaita Acharya is Acharya. He is teaching us. And here he is. Uh, he is overwhelmed with this desire. The Lord himself has to come. Because otherwise this whole world is going to hell. <laughs> and uh, the Lord his, himself, he, he listened to Advaita Acharya, to his plea, and he came. Uh, but uh, for many years, for 20, uh, 23 or 22 years, he was hidden. He didn't manifest himself. I will tell just a couple of more pastimes of Advaita Acharya uh, to glorify him a uh, little bit on this day. First, I wanted to tell how Advaita Acharya tested the Supreme Lord. He wanted to... <clears throat> and that's again a very important teaching of Advaita Acharya. Uh, few lessons already we learned. The first lesson Advaita Acharya taught us when he was five years old, when he refused to worship uh, anyone else besides his worshipable deity. Uh, that's a very important lesson which we have to understand. We have to worship one deity. And uh, if we have wish to devote, we have to worship this deity. Another important lesson uh, he taught us when he was uh, not just uh, doing pilgrimage to, uh, to Vrindavan, but was uh, sincerely within his heart uh, praying to the Lord, please manifest yourself in front of me. I want to worship you in a concrete form. The uh, desire to worship uh, ultimately has to manifest in our desire to worship the deity form of the Lord. It's a very important part of our tradition. We should definitely, uh, we should definitely chant the holy name, but uh, we also have to have the desire to do something for the Lord uh, in his deity form. And another lesson uh, is uh, this lesson of compassion. When Advaita Acharya heard this 
song of Vidyapati, he became so overwhelmed and swayed by this song. Uh, and uh, he became, you know, he became a preacher at that point. You know, we may not have compassion ourselves, but when we hear uh, about the compassion of Srila Prabhupada, we should be infected by this compassion. As much as Advaita Acharya was infected by the compassion of Vidyapati, he kind of reflected the same mood uh, in the heart. The heart has this reflective potency. And um, if, we, if we see very strong feelings uh, in other people, we should somehow rather reflect the same feeling in our heart. That's how Parampara goes. Srila Prabhupada came and he explained to us what Bhakti means. And Bhakti means, integral part of Bhakti is compassion. How to obtain compassion? Uh, just by hearing about Prabhupada's compassion. Taking his compassion deep to our heart, <laughs> reflecting his compassion uh, within our heart and trying to follow his footsteps. Uh, so, and then uh, another very important lesson is that Advaita Acharya was living in Shantipur with his wife Sita Devi and another wife Sri Devi uh, and uh, he was there and uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came back from Gaya and in Gaya he had this uh, complete uh, change of heart, he got initiation from uh, Ishwara Puri. And uh, <clears throat> when he came back, uh, he was totally transformed. And after some time, devotees became very happy and uh, they started um, thinking about uh, in the heart, what happened with Nimai Pandit? How all of a sudden he became such a great devotee? Maybe he is not just a great devotee, maybe he is somebody else, something more significant. And then uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he displayed uh, a pastime of uh, uh, meeting with Nityananda Prabhu. In his divine uh, revelation, he said that uh, divine personality will come, and he is Balaram himself. And he <coughs> met with, uh, he found uh, uh, Nityananda Prabhu in Nanda Nacharya's house, embraced him. And devotees, more and more, they, they be, were becoming more and more excited about the personality of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There is some intuition in them that he is more than just a bhakta. He is the Lord himself who came with this mission to propagate bhakti. So, <clears throat> what happened, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at one point, he said, tomorrow we will celebrate uh, Nityananda Prabhu as the original spiritual master. We will celebrate uh, Guru Puja for Nityananda Prabhu because he is the incarnation of Lord Balara and he is my elder brother. So it's a very, uh, very, not very covered hint which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave about his identity. He is the incarnation of Balaram and he is my elder brother. <laughs> so that's what he said about uh, Nityananda Prabhu. And he specifically said, please call Advaita Acharya because Advaita Acharya was the leader of all the Vaishnavas in Navadvip for a long time. And still, despite the Sankirtana movement has already been started by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Kirtan started, Advaita Acharya uh, didn't come yet. So, uh, Sri Vas Pandit, who, who became one of the first devotees who actually recognized that Lord Chaitanya is God himself, because Lord Chaitanya came to his temple and said, uh, in his altar, and said, please worship me, Sri Vas Pandit. <laughs> so again, quite revealing. <laughs> so, because Sri Vas Pandit was very much afraid of the Muslim kings, and uh, he was worshiping his Rishimha deity, and Lord Chaitanya started banging in his door and said, She was, why are you, why you so afraid? Just worship me and you will, your, your fear will vanish. She was, Pandit, 
he, he started worshipping and all his fears vanished when he was worshipping Lord Chaitanya. And uh, Lord Chaitanya said to uh, Ramai Pandit, brother of Srivast Pandit, you go to Shantipur and you get Advaita Acharya here. And Advaita Acharya is about to give us very important lesson. You know, he has heard all these rumors. He has heard what happened with Nimai Pandit. For a long time he was also uh, very enchanted by Nimai Pandit because Nimai Pandit used to come to his classes when he was a young boy, when Advaita Acharya was uh, giving classes and Vishwarup used to uh, visit his classes and listen to his lectures and uh, Nimai Pandit, uh, little Nimai uh, would come to him and uh, uh, call uh, Vishwambar back uh, to home and uh, Advaita Acharya was enchanted. But still, despite of this, and he heard all these rumors, he heard that uh, Srivast Pandit, who was a very sober Pandit, uh, became follower of Lord Chaitanya, who was much younger than Srivast Pandit and everyone. And he had this intuition. Uh, and now Ramai Pandit has come to him. And he said, you come to Navadvip. Chaitanya, uh, at that time he was not Chaitanya. Nimai Pandit is calling you and Nimai Pandit is God himself. He revealed it. He is going to reveal it tomorrow. And Advaita Acharya said, yes, yes, very nice, very nice. Let him reveal it to me. <laughs> he was not so easily swayed. He, it's a very important lesson. Uh, he wanted to test Lord Chaitanya. He took all the presents to him, he took his wife Sita Devi uh, and a palanquin uh, with all his entourage, uh, entourage he came to Navadvip but he didn't go to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he said if he wants uh, me to visit him let him find out where I am now <laughs> and he hid himself in the same house of Nandanacharya because it's a tradition it was a it was a place where everyone was hiding from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu you know, he already knew where they're going to, <laughs> to be hidden. So he was waiting there. And uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all the devotees, they were celebrating uh, Vyasa Puja of Nityananda Prabhu. And all of a sudden, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Oh, Advaita Acharya is here. But somehow or other, he's not coming here. Let's come to him. He is the Lord himself. Let's go to him. <laughs> And all the uh, devotees with Kirtan procession and with Nityananda Prabhu came to Nanda Nachari house. And uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said to Advaita Acharya, why are you hiding here? You are the Lord himself. Please come. <laughs> and Advaita Acharya started dancing and uh, glorifying Lord Chaitanya. And he was convinced that he is the Lord himself. Uh, anyway, so I, I can go on telling the pastimes of Advaita Acharya, but uh, uh, that's another lesson, important lesson that we should, uh, you know, we may believe in something, but at the same time we should not believe in something at the expense of our intelligence. And we should test uh, our belief by, the, uh, by this uh, kasoti stone of our intelligence. The intelligence is like this uh, testing stone for the for the gold. You know, if you want to know, uh, you know, the real gold, there is a special stone by which you can find out uh, if it's gold or not. So, in the same way, we should believe in God, but uh, the intelligence is given to us uh, so that we could uh, really test uh, our beliefs. And therefore Prabhupada came and he gave his books and he gave all the logics and all the proofs uh, why we should worship Lord Chaitanya, why we should worship Advaita Acharya, why we should worship Nityananda Prabhu, uh, how we should worship them and uh, what is the benefit of worshipping them. So again on this day, on this glorious day of Advaita Saptami, we should try to meditate on all these uh, pastimes of uh, Advaita Acharya, how many beautiful pastimes, how, how Advaita Acharya, uh, how once uh, Lord Chaitanya 
said that I will not give love of Godhead to my mother because she had offended Advaita Acharya. Uh, even though she didn't offend Advaita Acharya by saying this, she just thought in her mind. Uh, he is called Advaita, but actually he should be called Dvaita because he is duplicitous. He deprived me of my of one son, and now he is uh, doing the same with me. You know, and how he how Advaita Acharya, when he heard this, he became ecstatic and lost his consciousness. <laughs> and he said, Sachi Devi, she is such a great devotee. <laughs> You know, this very important lessons which Advaita Acharya teaching, uh, teaching us by this pastime. First of all, uh, just a thought was offensive. And that was enough for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to, to become very angry with his mother. She didn't say anything. You know, what to speak when we say something blasphemous against the devotees. He was just, she was just thinking bad about Advaita Acharya. That's how important it's, we, should, we should think. Even in our thoughts, we should be only glorifying devotees. We should never, never try to offend them. <laughs> Even though she, she had a reason, because, you know, she lost her son because of the preaching of Advaita Acharya. <laughs> But we really have to understand what devotee means and what devotion means. That's another lesson. Another lesson is that uh, Advaita Acharya didn't like that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was um, respecting him and uh, treating him as a senior and, uh, and Advaita Acharya to, uh, to um, show who he is in comparison with Lord Chaitanya. He started preaching Mayavad philosophy. Yoga was sister, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became so angry, and he just pulled down this uh, from from Vyasasana, pulled down Advaita Acharya, and started beating him. And Sita Thakurani became very afraid and said, you, "What are you doing to this old man?" Advaita Acharya was uh, was almost 80 years old at that time, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was. 23 years old, young and very strong, and he was pulling him and, you know, by, by the hairs and beating him. And Sita Takurani was running and crying and saying, you know, this old man will die, he will die. And Advaita Acharya himself was laughing, very good, very good, I got such a good punishment. And his little son, Achyutananda, at that time, he was also laughing and he said, very good, very good, very good. <laughs> Because, because this is what Advaita Acharya, Lord Chaitanya is teaching us that we should follow the social etiquette. If somebody is more elder, we should, um, uh, we should worship him. Uh, especially Advaita Acharya, he is the disciple of Madhavendra Puri, uh, he, is, he is Guru Varga. Uh, but uh, Advaita Acharya is teaching us much more important lesson. He is teaching us that we should actually worship those who have more bhakti, despite of all these social conventions, whether they are younger by age or they are, you know, maybe even less knowledgeable, by, but have more bhakti. He wants to teach the whole world by this pastime. Very good, very good. <laughs> uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is my worshipable Lord. So many important pastimes uh, are there, and ultimately it was uh, Advaita Acharya, he, he was the one who called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to this world. And many times uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was complaining, you know, I was peacefully sleeping in the milk ocean and then I was woken up by this loud cries of this madman, of this Advaita, and that's why I came here. And now he is teaching Yoga Vasishta, what's happening? <laughs> How he is doing this? He's betraying <laughs> me. I came and now he's teaching uh, Mayavad. <laughs> so it was Advaita Acharya who called uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to this world and it was Advaita Acharya who dispatched uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from this world. He wrote a riddle when Jagadananda Pandit went to Navadvip. Uh, Advaita Acharya wrote a riddle and he said, 
you know this, uh, you know, th th there is one madman and he is such a madman that everyone became mad because of his madness. And uh, now nobody is buying rice in the market. Uh, therefore, this madman uh, should go back to his mad kingdom or something like this. He, he, he wrote this riddle. <laughs> Uh, and nobody could understand the meaning of this riddle, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he uh, read this riddle of Advaita Acharya, he smiled and he said, oh yeah, he is right. Uh, everyone is mad uh, because of uh, love of Godhead, and uh, now it's time for me uh, to go back and let the other madmen continue my mission. So we are in this mission of mad people. Advaita Acharya is one mad man. He is the follower of another mad man. And uh, ultimately, the perfection of our life is that if, if by following their footsteps also become mad. And we can only become mad if we have mercy of all these mad men. There is no other way to become mad. Uh, somehow or other we should get some mercy of these mad people and also become mad and totally happy and oblivious of, the, uh, of all these sufferings of this world. But in the meantime we should try to also make other people mad. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how the parampara goes on. <laughs> when, uh, Haridas Thakur and Nityananda Prabhu were sent by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his first preaching mission. Actually, it was uh, Advaita Acharya himself who asked uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come out from, uh, from the house of Sri Pandit. For one year, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doing kirtans inside the doors, behind the closed doors, and then it was by the request of Advaita Acharya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came with all his associates and started doing Harinam uh, parties in uh, Navadvip city. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the first time sent for the preaching expedition uh, Haridas Thakur and uh, uh, Nityananda Prabhu and they encountered uh, Jagai and Madai, uh, Haridas Thakur came back from this when, he, you know, when Haridas Thakur was running for his life and Jagai and Madai was, uh, were running behind him and only because they were so drunk they couldn't catch him. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Haridas Thakur came back to Advaita's house and he started complaining. He said, you know, this, this, this Nityananda, he is totally crazy. Somehow or other, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked me to, to accompany this madman, and this madman, uh, he, he uh, met two drunkards, and these drunkards, they, they, they almost killed me. And when, uh, by running behind uh, myself, and uh, uh, when Advaita Acharya heard this complaint, he said very important thing, please listen, very important thing. He said, uh, there is not one madman. There is, very soon there will be four madmen. And these four madmen uh, will dance together in the streets of Navadvip. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Haridas Thakur was complaining about the madness of Nityananda Prabhu. And Advaita Acharya looked at him and said, you're also mad. And this Jagai and Madai, they will also become mad. And all four of you, by embracing each other, will dance in the streets of Navadvip. <laughs> because Nityananda Prabhu wants to give his mercy to Jagai and Madai. And it means that Jagai and Madai will also become mad. And you also mad, it's uh, known long ago. So don't worry. Uh, very soon these drunkards will become harmless. Uh, madman and you will dance together. 
So that's the madness parampara which we belong to. And I wish you happy Advaita Saptani and happy, happy becoming mad. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Three questions, okay. With respect to worship of Shaligram Shila for Grihasthas, was just curious, did Advaita Acharya continue to worship and pray to the Lord to incarnate and come down even after Lord Chaitanya's appearance? Or he knew that Lord Chaitanya was indeed the Supreme Personality of Godhead and acted as if he did not? Ah, <coughs> uh, she... Uh, it's a tradition that all the Grihastas should worship, uh, Brahman initiated Grihastas should worship Shalagram Shila. Uh, and Prabhupada instituted Shalagram Shila worship in our society. And uh, it's definitely important to worship Shalagram Shila. Uh, and many, many Grihastas have Shalagram Shila. And Advaita Acharya, there was Shalagram Shila in uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's home. Um, and usually it was Shalagram Sila who would be offered uh, prasadam, who would be offered boga, and uh, who would be offered abhishek every day. So Shalagram Sila is important. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was worshipping Shalagram Sila himself. And as far as I know, Advaita Acharya continued worshipping Shalagram Sila, which he found in, uh, in uh, Kali Gandaki river. And this Shalagram Shila is still there in Shantipur. And it's being worshipped. This tradition is still there. And we see all our Acharyas, they were worshipping Shalagram Shila, like Gopal Bhattagaswami, one of Shalagram Shila became uh, Radharaman. So. He. He only knew about the identity of Lord Chaitanya when Lord Chaitanya himself revealed his identity to everyone and invited uh, him. I, I explained this episode, you know, when Lord Chaitanya revealed his identity. Question by Srivas Krishna Chaitanya Guru. Namaskar Maharaj, these offensive tendencies are so deep rooted. Can you please suggest some ways to remove these tendencies from our heart? I suggested this way. <laughs> Just by glorifying devotees, we can get rid of this. By glorifying devotees and experiencing bliss of glorification. Because this is a perverted way to experience some happiness or some enjoyment by, uh, by uh, offending somebody. You know, like somebody was... There is not five rasas, there is six rasas. Uh, one is Shanta rasa, then Sakya rasa, Dasya rasa, Sakya rasa, Vatsalya rasa, Madhuri rasa, and there is Ninda rasa. <laughs> special rasa. <laughs> when, you, when you offend somebody, there is a special relationship, Ninda rasa. <laughs> so, you know, there is only one way to get rid of this tendency, is to experience rasa of glorification. If you glorify the devotee and experience the bliss, uh, you know, and happiness uh, from this glorification, then you can get rid of this tendency. Question from Chaitanya Das. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Bhakti with perfect knowledge seems correct. However, because of lack of intelligence, most of the time, I am just trying to practice bhakti without knowledge. Will this type of practice help me progress in this path? Can you explain? Uh, you know, if we're practicing the direct angas of uh, bhakti, and they don't require knowledge. Swarupa, uh, 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 <clears throat> Svarupa Shakti is there in the angas, in direct angas of bhakti. 
and Swarupa Shakti uh, means uh, Vastu Shakti. The fire burns whether you know that the fire burns or not. Um, it, it doesn't matter. The fire will burn you, you know, uh, if you put your hand into fire. In the same way, if we are hearing about the Lord, if we are chanting His holy name, whether we have knowledge or not, uh, it, it will uh, affect us, no doubt about it. Uh, but uh, if we want to be really absorbed in bhakti, the knowledge is required for this, or faith is required for this. Without knowledge, uh, the practice of bhakti will lack uh, required absorption. And we know, if there is knowledge and understanding that this is something very important, then the absorption is deeper. Uh, so without absorption, we can be casually engaged in bhakti, and it will have an effect, but the effect will not be as strong as possible, as, as it could be. So that's the difference. Окей, thank you very much. Сила Прабхупада ки джай, Шри Адвайта Ачари, Авербав Махоцева ки джай, Гору Примананди. Thank you. 